Good morning. In my 26 years of experience, approaching drivability faults was among the most challenging. That is, of course, until I had an understanding of what it takes to deliver the proper air-fuel ratio to the cylinder. However, when it comes to GDI, or gasoline direct injection strategies, it's a bit more challenging, to say the least. Stick with me on this episode of The Trainer and find out just how you can make light work of drivability diagnostic approach for GDI vehicles. As mentioned earlier, diagnostics for drivability is among the most challenging for technicians across the world. It's because there's many factors to solving drivability problems, including understanding the customer's complaint, replicating the concern, and finally capturing not only the correct data on our scan tool, but at the correct time. And if we can do all that properly and efficiently, we stand a chance of solving the problem. However, even if we do gather that information and we know where it is we decide we're going to test, understanding those test results themselves can be a challenge for the inexperienced drivability technician. But with the advancements in today's technology and the implementation of gasoline direct injection strategies, things have changed a little bit for us as diagnostic technicians. For one, we're dealing with a totally different animal. Gasoline direct injection strategies allow for the fuel to be delivered directly into the cylinder under high pressure, meaning we have different components that make up not only the low fuel pressure system, but also the high fuel pressure system as well, just like a diesel engine. But this video is more about diagnostic approach right from the driver's seat. Following up with last month's episode of The Trainer. With that, the point of this video is to point out that GDI strategies differ from that of port fuel injection strategies. Meaning, what we anticipate in response to faults related to computerized fuel injection, the GDI software responds differently to these faults when present. Let me give you a for instance. So, Given these new set of responses to faults and how they differ from port injection strategies, you and I as technicians have to change our approach just a little bit. True, we still have to replicate the fault as the customer describes in order to capture the data under faulted conditions. This of course will allow us to make diagnostic decisions right from the driver's seat and in fact help us rule out what cannot be wrong with the vehicle. But to do so means we have to organize our thoughts and approach it just a little bit differently. Here's a system I've learned to implement from my years of training with GDI fuel injection systems. And I like to call it AFAD. AFAD meaning A-F-A-D is an acronym I like to remember in my mind. A standing for air as in air management. That means measuring the air properly. F standing for fuel delivery. That includes everything from the tank all the way up to the tip of the fuel injectors, including the high pressure fuel pump and fuel volume regulator assembly, as well as feedback from the fuel rail pressure sensor. The second A stands for adaptives, meaning how the vehicle's computer is going to respond to these faults. And finally, D standing for default values what the computer is going to do to correct the faults. And this is something that's going to differ entirely on many GDI systems when we compare those to the port fuel injection strategies of yesterday. And now I'd like to show you a demonstration. A few captures recorded from a faulted BMW I was faced with in the recent past during a technical service call. So we've got this 2014 BMW X6 and the complaint I received is that the vehicle sets a P0303 or specific cylinder misfire for cylinder number three 
under heavy load above 4,000 RPMs. Now we always have to consider the vehicle's configuration. In this case, the vehicle is a V8 engine. It's turbocharged and it has two independent high pressure systems, meaning two independent GDI pumps, two independent fuel rails, and two independent fuel rail pressure sensors that feed back to the PCM. However, it shares a common low pressure feed. Now this vehicle also has two independent mass airflow sensors. So these are things to keep in mind when progressing forward. Now considering the complaint, I wanted to operate the vehicle to see how it performed. And as promised, under heavy load, the vehicle began to act up. But although we were experiencing a P0303, we do have some underlying issues to be noted here. First and foremost, we can see driving under heavy load, approximately 5,500 RPMs recorded here at this cursor. Although the vehicle's PCM was commanding an air-fuel ratio or lambda value close to stoichiometry, we measured about 36% lean. Now, although this is showing only one of the engine's banks, both of them were performing the same. But what surprises me most is under 5,000 RPMs, heavy load, our absolute load, is only recording 70%. So we have to ask ourselves here, why is this vehicle underfueled? Obviously, it's underfueled because we are 36% lean. So let's consider that. What are some of the possible causes of underfueling of the cylinders? First and foremost, we could have GDI, high pressure pumps, that have failed. But remember, this has twin independent pumps, two twin independent high pressure systems. So the chances of both pumps failing are less likely than one of them failing. And the fault is occurring on both banks. We could have a faulty low fuel pressure supply system, and that's a possibility because both banks are affected. However, we could also have restricted injectors because maybe the fuel system is contaminated. But remember our system, AFAD, the acronym for Air, Fuel, Adaptives, and Default. We always have to consider all four of them before making a decision. So we must consider the air mass calculation. And of course, we can have an issue with our wideband air fuel ratio sensors or our rear oxygen sensors, the ones post catalytic converter. So as AFAD suggests, we should first check on our air mass calculation because if the air isn't calculated properly, everything thereafter is going to be skewed as well, including fuel delivery. So the question is, is the engine breathing correctly? That's because fuel delivery is based upon measured air flow. As the engine's climbing in RPM value and load, our air mass rate from bank one and bank two is beginning to climb as well. But what we also notice is a drop in airflow rate on both banks. The question is why? Well, looking at our throttle position, although the gas pedal is being held to the floor under heavy acceleration, the throttle is being commanded to close. So we have to take this a step further. We've measured air, we've measured fuel, both appear to be insufficient. Now let's talk about adaptives and default strategies. What's different with GDI, fuel injected vehicles, as compared to port fuel injected vehicles is some of the strategies at play to compensate for faults. In other words, under lean conditions, you and I being familiar with port fuel injection strategies, it's common for us to expect an increase in fuel delivery from our fuel injection system by way of fuel trim to compensate for a lean air fuel ratio that's being measured. However, what we can do differently now with GDI systems is reduce the airflow to maintain proper air fuel ratio. 
So to recap, we can inject more fuel or we can take away some of the air. So what am I getting at here? The fact that we are measuring low airflow is not the cause of the problem, but it is in fact the effect of the problem. We in fact have a fuel delivery problem. So we have to determine is the engine being fueled correctly? Again, under heavy acceleration, our computer is commanding approximately stoichiometry. However, we are measuring 39% lean of stoichiometry. Again, this is only showing one bank of the engine, but the other bank is doing the same thing. And what we could see here is under heavy load, we should anticipate an increase in fuel rail pressure, but we can clearly see from this graphed data PID that fuel rail pressure is dropping, and it drops abruptly right here. So why would fuel rail pressure be dropping? At this point, we'd have to consider the causes of low high pressure or low fuel rail pressure. Again, we could have poor high fuel pressure pump operation. It wouldn't just be on one bank, it would be on both banks and that would require us to first perform some testing under the hood with our lab scope and amp probe to do that. We could have an advanced cam timing issue, meaning the timing for the fuel regulator valve closing is what determines how much fuel is trapped in the pump and therefore how much pressure can build. If the timing the cam timing is advanced, we trap less pressure, less volume, and we build less pressure. However, again, that requires testing under the hood. We could have something wrong with the control, the fuel volume regulator solenoid itself on both sides or control issue on both sides. But we can't condemn anything on the high side because we could have a low fuel pressure supply issue. So before we do any of that, if we revisit the data, we can see what occurred first. And that's what I'm calling the chicken or the egg here. So zooming in on engine speed under heavy load here, our fuel rail pressure drops before our load PID drops. What am I saying? The fact that the load PID drops occurs because we lose fuel pressure. So our problem is definitely a fuel rail pressure issue, and we have to troubleshoot that further. So do we replace both high pressure fuel pumps? Do we condemn and replace the fuel injectors? What about condemning the low pressure fuel pump in the tank? All of these could be problems. However, the most logical answer would be to gather more information about the low pressure fuel supply system. So as you can see, our approach to drivability faults with GDI fuel injection systems is a bit different than what we faced with port fuel injection systems. The same logic from a technician's perspective applies, but some new rules and strategies are available that we haven't faced in the past and we have to be aware of. Do yourself a favor. Don't take my word for it. Just remember AFAD. Air, fuel, adaptives, and default strategy. And evaluate the vehicle from all four of those perspectives. And not only will you locate the effect of the problem efficiently, that effect, after further investigation, will lead you directly to the root cause of the fault. Minimizing the time you spend under the vehicle or under the hood testing with your hands. I'm Brandon Steckler, Technical Editor of Motor Age Magazine, and I want to thank you for joining me again for this episode of The Train.